In this video, I want to share with you my top 10 cycling specific tools. Those little tools that make maintaining your bike that little bit easier. Welcome back to the channel. I'm John, the Ribble Valley Cyclist. Okay then, so tools. So at one end of the scale, you've got stuff like these, your spanners and your Allen keys. These are, you know, stock must have items that we turn to every day. But to be honest with you, they're not exactly the most complicated of tools, are they? <laughs> your typical DIY Dave up the road will have a set of that in his Ryobi toolbox, won't he? And then you've got stuff at the other end, the other extremes, your vernier gauges, your torque wrenches and your, what one have we picked up here? Your Park Tool BB 59.2 bottom bracket extracting tool. Now these sorts of things, hopefully you won't need to use stuff like that on a daily basis. What I wanna to talk to you about is my top 10 tools that I use on a regular basis to maintain my bikes. This is not specifically the must have list. This is my opinion of what is very handy to have and what works for me. Now, if you think I've missed something off this list, put a comment below because I can guarantee you there's tools up here that you're probably gonna see behind me say, why didn't you talk about that? Because it's a top 10, isn't it? I can't, it can't be a top 20 or a top 30 or a top 75. So yeah, if you think I've missed something off that was actually deserved to be in the top 10, stick a comment below. Right, okay, so let's crack on. Okay, so let's have a look then. Right, number 10 on my list, this little fella here the disc brake aligner tool. Now, as the name suggests, you use this to align your disc brakes. Now, what this does, it's actually, what I'll do is I'll create a video. If I move off to one side slightly, a video should appear. What this does, you get this and you basically wedge it between your disc and your caliper. Wedge it in there, get the caliper, undo it, pull the brake on, do it back up again. And the theory is that it aligns your um, the gap between the pad and the disc. Fantastic little gadget and works 95% of the time. Gets rid of that rub, well worth having. Now there are some people out there that will say, you know what, John, I've tried that, it doesn't work. <laughs> it does work, but it may not necessarily solve your problem. But you know what, that is a whole new video about disc rub and such and so forth that I'm not gonna go into because there won't be room for the other nine things I wanna talk about. But yeah, get one of those. I'll put a link in the description below. That is eBay for £2.75 delivered. Well worth it. Right, on to number nine. Number nine, the bike maintenance stand. Now, in my opinion, this one is, yes, it's a cycling specific, but it is an essential in my opinion. If you haven't got one of these, I cannot stress it enough. Get yourself one of these, well worth it. Simple to demonstrate, borrow someone's bike. Up you go, on, click down. There you go, simple as that, on. Now, tips on these. Yes, there is a particular brand that is similar to this color that do a very, very expensive one. You don't need to spend a great deal of money on one of these. This particular one is seven years old. This is the quick release version, so it's very easy to get the bike on and off. Quick release at the top, it's got the back adjuster, it's got the height adjuster, everything. This one, once again, put a link in the description below, this is 29 pounds you can pick these up for, delivered to your door. So, can't imagine any great reason why you wouldn't have one of these. And do you know what, it's just so much better. You can just do everything, get to everything. It's so much easier. Washing the bike, use this. Maintaining the bike, use this. Even storing the bike, use this. It's the way to go. To be honest with you, probably, on reflection, should have put it a bit further up the list. All right, on to number eight on my list. The Park Tool Master Link Pliers. So people say to me on a regular basis, John, how do you get your chains to clean? It always looks like a brand new chain. Simple, I take it off. So what I'll do in a second, I'll show you on this bike here. You get a pair of these and some call them a split link, some call them a missing link, but basically, you get a link that you can undo, you flick the chain off, clean the chain, put it back on again. And it's as simple as that. Forget all this getting one of these out, breaking the chain every time. 
just have a split link and I'll put a link in the description below because some split links you can reuse them not a lot of people know that and yeah so set of those you don't have to get the part tool ones it's just that I find the part tool ones very very good because I've had a few pairs of cheap ones and they literally bend so part tool ones it does it up and it undoes it for you as well so perfect little gadget whip the chain off put it in a load of degreaser make it sparkly clean new put it back on the bike great gadget my number eight Right, on to number seven on my list, the Disc Brake Bleeding Kit and Funnel. Bear with me a second. Not that, that's bar tape. One of those. And one of those. Right, Bleed Kit. Now, first off, I'll, I will be honest, this is not one I use as much as other tools that I mentioned on this list but I am very glad I have one and I have used it on a regular basis. I do maintain four disc bikes. What this allows you to do is basically, as you, you can well imagine, bleed the disc brakes on your bike. Now, one of the reasons I've included this on my list is I think every disc owner should have one of these because you should give it a try because it is not as complicated and as dark a science and witchery as people will make you think it is. It's a pretty simple process. Maybe one day I'll do a video on it. If you want me to, stick a comment below. So the kit, this particular one, you get lots of different kits from lots of different places. This particular one, I picked this one up from Wiggle, link in the description below about 15 pound and it's got everything you could ever possibly want it's got the brake fluid obviously in this case mineral and you've got the syringes slash plunger things different pipes spanners even the gloves and everything you could ever possibly want theoretically to do the job however in my opinion you also want one of these little things from shimano if you're using standard um hoods Basically what you do is you peel the hood back. You might have seen this done before, but never done it yourself. What you do is you peel the hood back on the bars and you fit this on. You peel the hood back, to, you, you, you unscrew the, the little bleed hole and you, you put this on, you put your fluid in and then you can then um, bleed the brakes and, and, and put additional fluid in, pull the little plunger out and in it goes. I won't go into detail. But it's well worth having one of those because you can just sit there flicking the uh, hose and you can watch the air bubbles come up or you know, tap the levers and watch the air bubbles come up through this. It's a very, very handy gadget for getting that trapped air out. But what I would also say with this, and if this is no longer the case, put a comment in below and, and tell me the times have changed. But with these, Shimano has two different threads to screw into their levers. So if you are getting one, yourself one of these, and I'll put a link in the description below, you also need this little adapter here that goes from the small thread to the large thread. So you can screw that into, if you're a roadie, standard 105 Altegra type Dura Ace levers. So yeah, my number seven, the bleed kit. Not as tough as you think it would be, give it a go. Okay, number six on my list. The chain checker. You use it to check your chain. Now what this does is it instantly gives you a visual indication as to whether your chain is worn or not. You can do the things like where, I've seen other videos suggest you can check by pulling the front of the chain here and seeing how far it pulls out and measuring that. To be honest with you, that's not a very exact science because that's relying on the chain ring to have not been worn as well. So it's not an exact science, and in my opinion, you shouldn't do it. Especially when you consider that the tool to check and do the job properly costs three pounds. Buy yourself one. I'll do a close up, but it is literally, you put it on the chain and it indicates whether the chain is worn or not. It's got two values, It's and think of it like this. Uh, it's think about buying a new chain, and you really need to buy a new chain. So you would, literally put it on the chain and drop it on okay and if you find that it drops all the way down then it's telling you that the chain is warm as i say you've got the two values you've got that one and then you've got the other one 
where it's the, as I say the think about and you really need to and if it when it's on the really need to setting if it drops all the way down and the bar lays on the chain then you need to replace your chain and if you don't then as I'm sure you already know you're going to wear out the chain rings the cassette and you're just going to do so much damage for the you know what's it 30 quid for a new chain so yeah my number six the cheap and cheerful chain chuck at all right we're into the top five and at number five the park tool cable cutters now every now and again in the world of tools you'll pick something up and you'll think to yourself now that is a really nice tool it's made very well and it probably does an amazing job and you would be right about these now prior to these back in my day when I was about that high riding around on my Riley Super Tough burner I would get my dad's pliers with a little wire cutter built into them and try and cut cables now this particular one this is a Jaguar one so this is very very good and you get these and you try and cut it <laughs> I can't cut it <laughs> it won't go so all I'm doing is I'm crushing it hang on let's try a pair of wire cuts so yeah this was the 12 year old me on my super tough burner no I can't cut it it will not cut all I'm doing is I'm crushing it and I'm just making a mess look made a complete mess of it right so that is why this park tool was invented and this will do a perfectly good job of just snipping it every time time and time again it's a lovely thing and it does a perfectly good job and it doesn't crush it in the unlikely event that it does crush it it's even got a little thing in here where you can put it in and reshape it to get rid of the crush if for example you want to put the finial on the end of your cable pop that in you've even got a little finial crusher so it crushes the finials that's what they call those things on the end of your cable so there you go the park tool cable cutter <laughs> has proved it does a very good job <laughs> right at number four the chain whip and cassette removal tool chain whip cassette removal tool now technically they're two separate tools but to be honest with you I very rarely use one without the other so I put them as one and literally you would use this to remove the cassette from your back wheel now at the moment it's winter so I'm using this all the time because I'm out and about all the crud and the crap is flying up off the front wheel of the bike and it's flicking it all back here and covering the back of the bike including the cassette now what you could do you can you could say don't bother with that and what you could do instead you could use <coughs> a brush like that with some degreaser or you could be really nerdy and use the muck off brush like that <coughs> and some degreaser and you could sit there turn clean turn clean and clean it alternatively as i say you could just get these two tools put that on grab your i have a separate one just for this Boom. on Put the chain whip around stop the, the cassette turning and go boom, and undo it and it is that simple i won't even bother demonstrating it it's that simple you just go like that and it comes undone unscrew it clean it get all of the grease and the crud out of the cassette and then just put it back on again and also this tool is also quite handy because you'll also find that some disc rotors on the center lock also use the same one in particular these hunt wheels use exactly that to lock the center lock disc rotors in and they're not expensive you don't have to buy a branded one that one four pound that one four pound 
link in the description below. Okay, we're up to the top three. And at number three for me is my ultrasonic cleaner, a machine that uses ultrasonic sound to clean components. Been around a while now, but they're starting to become more popular in the cycling world to clean metal components. So popular that you're now seeing companies like Muckoff there getting, I think it might even be this exact machine, sticking their name on it and selling it as a component cleaning bath machine. Okay, so what actually is it? Well, what it, what it does, apart from look like a, a, a chip fryer, what it does is uh, you fill it with water and a cleaning agent, some kind of chemical, and it uses ultrasonic sound to clean components. So what it's got in the bottom of it, it's got what they call transducers, technical word for speakers. And those speakers are firing um, a vigorous ultrasonic sound into the fluid and literally vibrating the components clean. So imagine the scenario, uh, you've not cleaned your bike for a few weeks and you've been doing lots of winter riding, muddy country lanes, you might be a mountain biker, getting lots and lots of crud on your components get your little basket you put your chain in there you put your cassette in there you set it to I don't know 15 minutes pop it in the fluid hit go walk away go outside wash your bike come back 15 minutes later machines done rinse it off take it out and what you're left with is surgically clean components get those components put them back on your bike make sure you put plenty of oil on because you've just put it through one of these put plenty of oil on it and there you go done a simple, quick and easy way to clean a component within an inch of its life. There's a bit of controversy about it. I've done a separate video on this actually. Uh, in my earlier days when I first started out doing my YouTube videos, one of the first things I did a video on was this. So it's not my best work, but yeah, I'll put a link in the description below and find out about this. My number three, the ultrasonic cleaner. All right, so here we are at my number two. Now. Number two for me is all based around tubeless tires and the frustrations inflating them and popping the bead. So I've got around me here one, two, three bikes that are running tubeless and they've been running tubeless for a good few years now. So I've got more than my fair share of agony and experience when it comes down to setting up tubeless tires. Now how I've <coughs> used to do it how i used to do it was the same way that everyone else did you had this like this big canister didn't you and you get a track pump and you get the track pump, pump this thing up put a load of air into this canister and then you'd attach the canister to the wheel flick the lever and it dumps a load of air out and then you stand there thinking please 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 and hopefully it pops the bead and it seals and you know if you've got a decent tire you yeah you should be okay but You've then got the other scenarios where you've got a bit of a notoriously bad tire and you just cannot get the bead to sit. So then where are you? Well, you've got this gadget and you keep pumping it up, firing it out, pumping it up, firing it out and doing the same thing over and over and nothing happens. You're just letting loads of air out. So you then start thinking, right, okay. So you start seeing all these tricks, don't you? You get people that get these, like, these packing straps and put all packing straps around them and then try it that way. Or they try it, they get a high concentration of warm water and washing up liquid and, and cover them in loads of soap to try and get it to pop that way. Or they do the, the whole inner tube trick just to try and get this tire bead to sit. So that's my first problem with inflating tires with one of those canisters. It doesn't always work. Now my second problem with them is that for what they do, they're really quite expensive. Like if you look at like the top of the range one, well, the one that everyone raves about, that's, that's, that does a really good job of it apparently, that's the Bontrager one, it's a massive great big thing. And aren't they like 150 or 170 pounds or something? So that's a lot of money for a device that may or may not do one job. Um, and that leads to my third point with them. Well, that's all they do. They're a hundred and whatever. Yeah, okay, you can get some cheaper ones, but a decent one's gonna cost you at least 100 pounds, isn't it? So if something that costs roughly 100 pounds and all it does is pump up tubeless tires, well, 
There's a smarter way of doing it in my opinion. And it's with a compressor. Yeah, now I know not everyone has the luxury of being able to do this, but first of all, this is cheaper than doing it your Bond Rage away. This is 119 pounds. I'll put a photograph there of this particular compressor, which is under this bench. And yes, yeah, so I've got a workshop, so yes, I can do this. And yeah, if you're in a one bedroom flat in a city somewhere, then yeah, this may not be something you can do, but this works for me because I'm in this situation. So let me show it you anyway. So first of all, and let's change the head. Okay, now this, is an all right wheel with the notoriously frustrating Panarasa Gravel King TLC SK. Don't ask what the SK stands for. Now these things are notoriously frustrating when it comes down to getting the beta seal. Right, so that is 100%, as you can see, not fixed. The tire's all right. I run it on my gravel bike. It does an all right job as a, a, a winter tire going up and down tow paths and stuff. But to get them to see, oh God, it drives you crackers. So let's just put that pipe over the valve. All right, and let's pump it up. Boom, there you go, done. That easy. So. That is how easy it is to do it with this. But the thing is with this, Compared to the, 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 the tank, this does a lot more. I can put an air tool on it and clean bike parts. I can put, I, I, I can put a I can put air tools on it, sand, drill, do all sorts. And this costs less than the Bontrager, which has a cubic feet per minute airflow of 4.5 and this does twice that and it's 119 pounds and it does all those other things as well so for me if you can accommodate a machine un under your bench it's a much better way of doing it so there you go my number two an air compressor <laughs> Okay, so the number one's coming up in a second, but in the meantime, if you found it useful so far, make sure you hit that like button. And if you think after seeing my number one, you think I've missed a tool off, make sure you put a comment below. Now, also, uh, I've got a video coming up about a very, very clever base layer. Uh, and considering it's currently minus two outside, you might wanna hit the subscribe button and check that out. Right, okay, so on to my number one tool for the workshop, and that is the Park Tool B01 Bottle Opener. Cheers, thanks for watching.